In the first year of the Yuanqing reign of the Great Han Dynasty, the young protagonist Lu Zhao ultimately fell ill. After experiencing countless scenery, the Great Han finally welcomed heavenly jealousy. Countless disasters have erupted, and countless suppressed problems have emerged, just as those nobles and nobles in the court are at a loss. A woman finally walks slowly to the front of the big man with her late husband's expectations for her. I am the Empress of the Han Dynasty, and I will lead the Han Dynasty to continue its prosperity. Keywords of the Novel I am the Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty. No pop dot up window, I am the Empress Dowager of the Han Dynasty. Download the complete TXT collection, I am the Empress Dowager of the Han Dynasty. Latest Chapter Reading Let me help you again in Chapter 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1, Let Me Help You Again In the first year of Yuanqing, in the Yetting of the Great Han Dynasty, in the palace of Empress Deng Sui. Cough 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 cough, suddenly, a painful cough came from within the curtains of the bed, causing a wave of fear in the heart of the Empress Dowager of Han at the door, Deng Sui. After an instant of panic, the Empress of the Han Dynasty, Deng Sui, took several deep breaths again to calm her emotions, don't panic. Don't panic. The continuous comfort in my heart finally helped me stabilize my emotions once again. Then he sent out waves of questioning towards the outside. Order the Yulin army to immediately block the sleeping quarters of this palace and prohibit anyone from entering this place. Also, tell the Imperial Medical Office that our palace is seriously ill, and your majesty has authorized the Imperial Medical Officer to stay in the dormitory and provide constant medical treatment for our palace. Let the people from the Imperial Medical Office tell the family members of the Imperial Medical Order not to worry. Also, where has Brother Deng Xiaobo gone? I don't know if your majesty has sent him to see this palace for the last time, why hasn't he come yet? Go to the Deng family's mansion again and tell them that our palace is going to be ruined. Let our brother Deng Ji enter the palace immediately. Go to the palace immediately. Quick. Deng Sui's orders kept appearing in the palace, and then a famous Xia Wangman began to run with his orders. Watching the distant eunuch from the yellow gate, Deng Sui's face became even heavier. At the same time, the cough within this curtain turned into even more painful moans, and at that moment, Deng Sui's face couldn't help but change greatly. Empress. Get lost. When Deng Sui heard this call, she finally couldn't resist her impulse and rushed directly into the curtain. Then, a group of eunuchs, who had already been ordered by the imperial physician, knelt down and threw themselves directly onto the bed. Looking at the young but already disheartened man, Deng Sui's heart couldn't help but twitch. Your Majesty. Empress, Lu Zhao, who was only twenty-seven years old on the bed, looked at the beautiful woman in front of him, and couldn't help smiling at her mouth, even when it was extremely uncomfortable. He still couldn't help but gently place his hand on Deng Sui's head and then gently comfort her. It seems to be comforting Deng Sui's mood. Empress, don't worry, I. I can still protect you. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, don't speak any more. Deng Sui's face became even uglier after hearing Lu Zhao's words, and his eyes turned directly to the already kneeling imperial physician, his voice becoming cold. As the Grand Physician of the Han Dynasty, why hasn't Your Majesty's body improved at all? What are you up to? My dear, the imperial physician couldn't help but turn pale upon hearing these words. His face was as ugly as ever. The empress has wronged my dear, and I have done my best. I am not unwilling to treat your majesty. Your majesty has been overworked for so many years, and this has become a disease due to accumulated labor. What this palace wants is for your majesty's health to improve, not for your wholehearted efforts. What's the point of your wholehearted efforts? All right. At this moment, Lu Zhao interrupted Deng Sui's words again, looking at him with some helplessness as he smiled again. Empress, help me up. Your Majesty cannot. Obedience. At this moment, Lu Zhao once again transformed back into the majestic emperor, 
but when he faced his empress, all this majesty turned into tenderness even he couldn't help but show a bitter smile. I have been in court for many years and held the power of the great Han dynasty for eighteen years. At the age of thirteen, I personally took over the power by pacifying my relatives, the Doe family. For so many years, I have been working hard to govern, sending troops to conquer the Xiongnu, defeat the Guishuang Empire, and conquer more than fifty countries in the western regions. Let the distant Tiaoji, Sabbath, and the country forty thousand miles away by the seaside all pay tribute. Let the power of Han Dynasty spread far and wide throughout the world. After so many years, it's finally time for me to live in peace and harmony with the great Han Dynasty. Unfortunately, at this moment, I really can't bear it anymore. I have restrained myself and kept my etiquette, which can be said to have given everything I have for the sake of the great Han. But I only have one thing to do according to my own temperament. That's our queen. At this moment, Emperor Lu Zhao of the Great Han, with the personal support of Deng Sui, finally slowly got off the sickbed and grabbed his beloved empress with one hand. While gently soothing her palm, she calmed down her anxious mood. Finally, looking at the gaze that could not be calmed down no matter what, Lu Zhao slowly embraced the empress into his arms. At this moment, everyone lowered their heads and dared not focus their gaze on those two people anymore Empress, don't panic like this. I have never felt that my choice was wrong before. I won't regret anything before, and I won't regret it now. I won't regret it either in the future. So, don't let me down, okay? Good officials and concubines all listen to your majesty. Deng Sui's lips couldn't help but tremble. Tears seemed to have reached the corner of her eyes, but she tried to restrain all her emotions and couldn't let this tear fall. Seeing the woman in front of him so hardworking and strong, Lu Zhao couldn't help but feel a bit heartbroken. But he couldn't help but show a smile. I won't be by your side in the future, so you should be like this. What a big man needs is not a weak empress, what a big man needs is you. What he needs is your strength and dominance. Be obedient and put away all your tears, understand, I understand. I understand. Come on. Lu Zhao once again pulled the Empress Deng Sui to his dressing table, but this time it was Lu Zhao who sat in front of the bronze mirror. Then he whispered to Deng Sui with a smile on his face. Previously, it was me who came to eyebrow you, but this time I have to trouble the Empress to paint me a makeup. Your Majesty. Don't worry, I know what you asked Zhao Bo to do, but it will take some time to retrieve our child from the public. If I stay in your palace all the time, then those people outside will definitely notice. No matter how covert you are, they will know. Although the woman has died, his family has always had connections with Shinger. Although you haven't mentioned it, I'm not unaware. This Yin family is really a lingering master. Don't forget that they have been holding a grudge against the past for years. And that woman is, after all, the great-granddaughter of Zijinwu Yin Shi, the brother of Empress Guanwuye Yin Lihua. The Empress Dowager Guanwu, who was the great ancestor of the Han Dynasty, also had a huge influence. They are different from you. Over the years, their influence has been deeply rooted in my Han Dynasty, and even I dare not say that I have truly cleaned them all up. If you really let Shinger come back first, it will be very dangerous for you if I can still persist for a while, let me help you again. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 I, let you sit next to me. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 I, let you sit next to me. Your Majesty, return to the palace. Accompanied by the sharp sound of the yellow gate, the emperor's carriage, which had been lingering in the empress's dormitory for several days, slowly rotated again, walking towards the Zhangde Hall where the emperor should be, under the protection of the Feather Forest Army and the Yellow Gate in the palace. However, this not too far journey took a long time to walk. Lu Zhao seemed to be deliberately trying to make everyone see him. He rode on the carriage, lightly leaning on his forehead with his hands, and then closed his eyes and leisurely swayed in the palace for most of the time. I slowly walked into the Zhangde Hall. Go, 
summon Sikong Chin Chong, Tai Chang Ying Qin, and Shang Fang to invite Kai Luan and the three others. Order, bring the latest memorial for me to review. Your Majesty. At this moment, the eunuch attendant beside Lu Zhao couldn't help but be greatly surprised when he heard these words. They are all elderly people who have been following Lu Zhao for a long time. Although they have no status or authority, they are loyal to Lu Zhao. Therefore, it is very clear what level Lu Zhao's body has reached at this time. At this moment, what he needs the most is to stay in bed and rest. To be disrespectful, during this final time, he should try to make himself as comfortable as possible. But now, looking at what His Majesty means, it's clear that we need to continue Your Majesty, it is absolutely forbidden. As the Imperial Physician has already stated, Your Majesty has been dealing with government affairs from a young age and has been busy with it day and night. This has led to overwork and illness, and from then on, there is no cure. Now, didn't he already say that the medicine stone is hopeless? Lu Zhao interrupted the maid's words with a hint of a light smile. Since the medicine stone is hopeless, why waste time on that sickbed? Today, I finally have some strength left. If they don't show me that I'm still alive, will they still plan to make me cough and cough? Will they panic in my people's hearts, your majesty? Go! Lu Zhao shouted angrily, causing the attendant in front of him to tremble all over and then he dared not speak any more. Only. The eunuch who bowed and left immediately sent someone to pass on the orders of the emperor, and at the same time, secretly summoned the empress to quickly find a way to come to this Zhangda hall. At this moment, only the empress can persuade his majesty. With the spread of Lu Zhao's orders, the just tumultuous great Han dynasty hall once again became calm. The voices that appeared due to His Majesty's prolonged stay in the Queen's Palace are now slowly disappearing without a trace. In their view, this is because Your Majesty has once again come out to preside over important matters, so this great man can continue to remain stable. And one of the three officials who received the news, Sikong Chen Chong, the head of the nine ministers, Tai Chang Ying Qin, and the Shangfang Ling Kai Luan, who was developing many secret weapons for the great Han in the palace, immediately put down their things. Arrived in front of Lu Zhao with full of excitement. Dear officials, hello. All right, there are no outsiders here, don't stick to vulgar etiquette. Lu Zhao felt that his body was getting worse and he didn't want to continue wasting his time. So he spared all the formalities and went straight to the most critical moment. Of course, before that, he must wait for someone else. Your Majesty, please meet the Empress. Just as everyone sat down and waited for Lu Zhao's words at his signal, the call of the attendant came from outside once again. Empress Deng Sui also arrived here with a sickly appearance and a bowl of freshly brewed soup medicine. The Empress is here. Lu Zhao pretended to know nothing and said in surprise, I happen to be looking for her. I didn't expect the Empress to be so kind dot hearted with me. Quickly let the Queen in. After hearing Lu Zhao's words, everyone present, except for Shangfang Ling Kai Luan, couldn't help but furrow their brows. They knew that the Emperor and Empress were harmonious, and some gossip actually spread outside the palace, so they had long been accustomed to these things. But now, Sikong Chen Chong and Tai Chang Ying Qin looked at Lu Zhao with a smile on their face and felt that since the emperor had brought them here, there must be many important matters to explain. And the queen came here, to some extent, not understanding the rules. However please don't get angry too often. This is the Zhangda Hall, not the Deyang Hall for handling government affairs. The queen can be in the West Palace, and she can also be in this Zhangda Hall. The Shangfang on the side ordered Kai Luan to look at Yin Qin, who was already ready to stand up and say something, and immediately interrupted his movements. At the same time, he smiled slightly at the nearby Sikong Chin Chong, as if thanking Chin Chong for not taking any action. And after being touched by Kai Luan with words, Yin Qin's face couldn't help but become even more gloomy. However, he also knew that what Kai Luan was saying made some sense. If this was the Deyang Hall, the Empress would not want to enter. But Zhang Dedian, 
high, he didn't pay attention to it himself. And the small movements and changes in their expressions and thoughts just now fell into the eyes of Lu Zhao. However, Lu Zhao saw it in his eyes and remembered it in his heart, but there was no change in his face, and he didn't even say a word more. Just greeted the empress with a smile and drank the bitter soup among the reasons she casually found. Finally, he grabbed the empress who wanted to retreat. Sit by my side. Your Majesty. At this moment, the head of the nine ministers, Tai Chang Yin Qin, who had always been responsible for managing the etiquette of the ancestral temple, finally couldn't bear to see it anymore. Please accept it, Your Majesty. Since ancient times, there has been a distinction between monarchs and officials. This empress should naturally settle in the western palace and settle in the rear position, serving as Your Majesty, the court, and overseeing the affairs of the harem for the world. Now that you have come here, it is Your Majesty's generosity. How can you sit by His Majesty's side? If it were to be spread in the future, wouldn't it make people all over the world laugh at me? Tai Chang Yin Qin's scolding was fast and ruthless. The Shangfang behind him, Kai Luan, tried several times to stop and interrupt, but failed to find a suitable opportunity. In the end, I could only look angrily at the guy in front of me. Meanwhile, Sikong Chen Chong beside him had a somewhat conflicted and embarrassed expression on his face. Finally, he looked up at Lu Zhao and Empress Deng Sui, and let out a sigh of helplessness. But he didn't speak. After Yin Qin finished speaking, Deng Sui's face couldn't help but change a bit. She silently shrank her arm and then prepared to apologize by bowing and saying goodbye. But just as she was about to take action and prepare to speak, Lu Zhao increased his strength once again. The tone also became more serious in this moment. I, let you sit next to me. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Empress, in the future, this big man will be handed over to you. 1. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Empress, in the future, this big man will be handed over to you. 1. Lu Zhao's gaze became firm and eager here. The scorching gaze made Deng Suedu feel as if he had been burned. At this moment, in the hall, the head of the nine ministers, Tai Chang Yin Qin, seemed to want to say something more. As the person in charge of the ancestral temple etiquette, he felt that today's Your Majesty was indeed too indulgent. But just as he stood up again, ready to raise his head and offer advice, his eyes suddenly caught a glimpse of the corner of Lu Zhao's eye. That was filled with a cold and fierce radiance, which contrasted sharply with his gentleness as he gazed at the queen. At this moment, Yin Qin, the head of the nine ministers, finally closed his mouth. He was a person who was willing to give advice fearlessly for his beliefs and rules in his heart. But that doesn't mean he's just a fool at this moment, Yin Qin couldn't help but look at the Sikong Chin Chong behind him, hoping that Sikong, one of the three nobles, could also express his opinion. Unfortunately, this Sikong still maintained his benevolent heart, facing such a situation and Lu Zhaozi's unreasonable decision. He remained silent and also maintained a tacit attitude. This situation forced Yin Qin to suppress all the words he wanted to say. Similarly, under the firm attitude of Lu Zhao and the silent attitude of Sikong Chin Chongma, the empress of the Han dynasty, Deng Sui, slowly sat beside Lu Zhao. With a hint of tension, a hint of bitterness, and even a hint of pain. Your Majesty. Don't talk, just stay here today and do it. Lu Zhao interrupted Deng Sui's words, then shook her wrist very hard. Today, just look at me and how I handle things. After hearing these words, Deng Sui seemed to understand something, and the bitterness in his heart became even more severe. He understood that this was his husband, and in the end, he was able to handle his own affairs. Or rather, this is her husband explaining the aftermath for herself in the next two hours, the Emperor of Han seemed to have once again forgotten all the pain on his body. Countless memorials were delivered to him from the front hall, and with the help of Chin Chong and Yin Qin, they were constantly cleaned up by him. Then it becomes a new command transmitted to every corner of this big man the sudden outbreak of natural disasters in this place, 
the resurgence of fluctuations in the western regions, the envoys from other countries who come to pay homage, and the foreign tribes outside the Great Wall who die like a hundred-legged insect without stiffening whether it's natural disasters or man-made disasters, or the good news and auspiciousness that this place brings to the court, or even the memorials of land cultivation and consolidation, as well as the current rice and grain prices in that country the big and small events of this world are now gathered in this small hall, in those volumes of memorials. And these memorials, which were enough to make anyone feel numb, were now easily resolved in Lu Zhao's hands. If there is an invasion from outside the country, quickly mobilize troops and generals, choose suitable generals, draw troops from the local area, and gather food and supplies from various places to rush to the front line. Finally, assemble troops to suppress it. If there is a natural disaster, it is necessary to open up the treasury from the local area and immediately select good officials and famous officials from the court officials and other legal offices to inspect the area, in order to avoid those who take advantage of the chaos and make great fortune in the country. Then, food was quickly allocated from the court and surrounding areas to appease the people, and local taxes were imposed to appease their hearts. At the same time, it implies that surrounding counties should block roads and not allow refugees to flee, causing greater panic. And quietly gather troops and horses around, ready to suppress at any time. If envoys from other countries come to pay tribute, they will be summoned to contact and interact with the other party to appease them. Secondly, it is to take the opportunity to inquire about information, obtain their demands from their mouths, and thus determine whether there are any problems in the other party's country. And then see if there are any available places to use as for the price of rice and grain in that country, various adjustments are also needed. The southwestern border cannot be managed, but the affluent areas of Hebei cannot be left unchecked. Firstly, it is necessary to ensure the survival of the barbarians in the southwestern region and to leave the deep mountains. Secondly, it is necessary to ensure that the people of Hebei can earn profits, money, and food. There should be no situation where low grain prices harm farmers these big and small things were quickly resolved, and Lu Zhao not only had to solve these things, but also had to state the purpose of doing so every time he solved them. It can be said that there are no details, and all of my thoughts, even the thoughts of Sikong and Tai Chang, need to be expressed very clearly. This is not Lu Zhao's personality. If we were to do it normally, it wouldn't take him half an hour to complete this task. The speed would only be astonishing. But today Yin Qin looked at the exceptionally peculiar emperor and finally discovered something unique. Then, when Lu Zhao once again began to explain in detail the completely unexplainable matter. He silently came to Qin Chang's side. Si Kong Gong, how do you feel about this matter now? Hmm. Chen Chong, who was already quite old, suddenly opened his eyes after hearing this question, as if he had just fallen asleep. Looking at Yin Qin with some confusion, he asked. What does Yin Tai Chang mean? What is this and how should we view it? The old man said, What do you think of your majesty's strangeness today? Yin Qin's face was a bit gloomy, and he didn't know what to say as he looked at Chen Chong. Didn't you notice your majesty's strangeness today? Mm, -mm Chen Chong pondered again, then shook his head slowly after a while. Well, this old man is getting old this year and his eyes are dim, but he can't see anything. He 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 he, Yin Qin looked at Sikong Chen Chong with a calm expression on his face, and a mouthful of old blood directly stuck in his heart. I almost couldn't help but pat the table. However, just as he turned his head and was about to stop talking to this person, Chen Chong spoke up again. Justine Tai Chang, are you ready? Hmm. Yin Qin was taken aback by this sentence, what does Sikong mean? What is Qin preparing for? Preparing to take over the old man's affairs, cough 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 cough. After Sikong Chen Chong finished speaking, he seemed to be unable to resist and coughed heavily twice. Then he couldn't help but take a breath and look at Yin Qin in front of him, as if he was pointing at him. Yin Tai Chang has always been a devoted and studious person, and he is a rare talent for me as a great Han. I'm old at this age. 
I'm afraid there won't be much time left. If I die in the future, I will always need someone to help your majesty. Help the great Han look at this world, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Empress, in the future, this big man will be handed over to you. 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Empress, in the future, this big man will be handed over to you. 1. Cough, cough, cough. Just as Yin Qin was shocked by the words of Sikong Chen Chong, the high dot ranking emperor seemed to be unable to hold on. A burst of coughing erupted directly, violently startling. Your Majesty! Upon hearing the commotion, Yin Qin immediately turned his head back and shouted loudly towards Lu Zhao, even wanting to rush forward to see what was wrong with the emperor. However, before he could take any action, Lu Zhao quickly wiped away the blood he had coughed up, then covered his palm with his sleeve and stopped his movements in panic. Don't panic, I just choked on water just now. I Ching is the leader of the nine ministers of my great Han dynasty. In the future, he will be the one who will wield power for my great Han dynasty. How can he be so panicked? If that's the case, how can I hand over the wings of this world to you in the future? Lu Zhao's words were very light, but they made Yin Qin stand still and his breath became tense. Although this was to stop his action, the meaning represented by this sentence made him unable to resist swallowing saliva, Your Majesty. All right. Lu Zhao looked at the clean memorial and couldn't help but take a deep breath, trying again to suppress the pain and discomfort in his body. At the same time, he lifted his left hand to interrupt Yin Qin's words. This matter has been handled quite well, and today it was also a day of hard work for Sikong and Tai Chang. I feel a bit tired. Taking care of the queen during this time is a bit tiring. You can go to the side hall to rest for a while. I will call you back later. After hearing these words, Yin Qin couldn't help but feel a bit of bad premonition in his heart. However, as he looked at the expression on his face, although it was a bit too naive, there was no other expression on it. In the end, he could only leave slowly under the pull of Chen Chong. But after they left, Lu Zhao stopped Kai Luan again. Zhong Chan attendant, please stop. Under Lu Zhao's shout, Kai Luan, who was already preparing to turn around and leave, had to stop his steps. Then he bowed to Lu Zhao again and humbly stopped in the hall. Previously, Chen Chong and Yin Qin were discussing politics with Lu Zhao, while Kai Luan was very obedient waiting in the corner, silently watching everything in front of him. Even when Lu Zhaoxi looked over from time to time, he felt like he was out of his mind and didn't hear a single word however, at this moment, when there were only a few of them left in the hall, Kai Luan's appearance had once again changed. Serious, respectful, calm, and atmospheric in Kai Luan, who comes from Gian County, is not as petite as a southerner. On the contrary, he looks quite masculine. The literary style of people from Jiangnan also has a touch of grandeur and firmness. This tangled and complex temperament made Dang Suedu couldn't help but glance at him a few more times. But the gaze was full of scrutiny. At this moment, Lu Zhao once again grabbed Dang Sui's arm and whispered to Kai Luan. You must be familiar with this person, my constant attendant and also my Shangfang Ling. Yes, I have also heard of Kai Shangfang's famous minister and concubine. It was not only last year that His Majesty rewarded him with Kai Shangfang's papermaking skills. And he ordered the whole country to follow this law, and for a moment, it is unknown how many people are grateful to His Majesty, oh, this is just one of Kai Luan's merits. Lu Zhao chuckled again at this moment and then whispered to Kai Luan, he. He has argued with me many times in these years, and I don't know how many times he has made my heart ache, dot. Deng Sui, who originally had a slight smile, couldn't help but tremble slightly when he heard Lu Zhao's words, and his gaze couldn't help but turn to Kai Luan on the side. At this moment, Deng Sui, who had been in the palace for a long time, didn't even know what his majesty wanted to do. Could it be that he wanted to take this opportunity to punish Kai Luan severely? However, when Deng Sui looked at Kai Luan, he suddenly realized how indifferent he was. 
Even when Lu Zhao beside him mentioned that Kai Luan had helped the Empress Dowager frame the past of Song Guifei, he had no reaction. It seems that this is not about oneself. Kai Luan. Lu Zhao seemed to be saying something tiring, so he directly clicked on Kai Luan again. I am here. I just said so much, why don't you refute? Your Majesty's words are all facts, and I am powerless to refute them. Is it powerless or unwilling? I'm also powerless, and I don't want to. He he, he he, ha ha, ha. Lu Zhao heard these words and couldn't help but burst into laughter as he looked at Kai Luan in front of him. All right, truly worthy of being my most valued confidant. Starting from today, you will still be my great Han's middle attendant and my great Han's Shangfangling, but you still have a new identity, please order, your majesty. Kai Luan seemed to have thought of something, but he didn't say much. Instead, he knelt down in front of Lu Zhao, solemnly waiting for his new appointment. From today on, you must guard the Empress's side and be a guard for her. Kai Luan seemed to recognize the meaning behind this sentence. He couldn't help but feel a moment of silence, but immediately took a deep breath and respectfully replied, only. I know this road will be very difficult, but I have no choice. Kai Luan, you are truly the most valued confidant. I once said that you have made great contributions to the Han dynasty. Your bows, crossbows, and swords will become the sharp blades of my Han dynasty. But none of these are as fragile as the snow.white paper in your hand. Bow and crossbow swords can only kill enemies, but paper can last for thousands of generations. And today, I want to tell you that nothing is more important than my empress. Because of coughing and coughing. Because she will carry the future of my great man. Lu Zhao immediately grabbed Deng Sui's arm with force after a severe cough. I don't have much time left, I really don't have much to teach you. Kai Luan is capable, talented, and cunning, but he is loyal to me. Although he has angered me many times over the years, it is because of his honesty and prudence that he has repeatedly spoken frankly and dared to remonstrate, and has made positive contributions to me. Today, asking him to protect you thoroughly is already the only thing I can do for you, your majesty. No need to speak, listen to me. Lu Zhao seemed to have really little strength left and interrupted Deng Sui's words. I'm already tired. Starting from today, Empress, my Empress, this great Han will be handed over to you. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Empress Dowager Deng Sui of the Great Han Dynasty You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty Deng Sui, Azui. In the Zhangde Hall, Lu Zhao lay exhausted on the bed, looking at Deng Sui in front of him, both physically and mentally exhausted. He wanted to lift his palm countless times and touch Deng Sui's face again. But every time I lift my palm, it eventually droops weakly. He had truly entered his final moments, forcefully supporting himself and teaching Deng Sui how to handle national affairs and how to deal with various situations. Lu Zhao finally collapsed completely. At this moment, he can even be said to have only one last breath left to hold on to himself. If it weren't for the last thing in his heart that he couldn't let go, Lu Zhao would have already fallen by now. And what he couldn't let go of at this moment was nothing else, it was his son who had not yet returned, and he was also the true heir of this great man, at least the nominal successor now, your majesty, who Ben Zhonglang has invited Deng Zhi into the palace to meet with your majesty. Thank you. Please come in. When Lu Zhao heard this sentence, his eyes immediately became bright, and his whole body seemed to become more energetic. Hurry up and invite him in, hurry up, please come in. Lu Zhao's tone seemed to have become more firm once again, and at the same time, he also worked hard to step on the ground with Deng Sui's help. But after several attempts, I ultimately chose to lie half down on the bed. Soon, Deng Zhi, the Tiger Benzhong general of the Great Han Dynasty and also the brother of Deng Sui, arrived in this sleeping hall. Of course, he was still holding a swaddle in his arms. Your Majesty! Are you back? 
Lu Zhao looked at Deng Zhi in front of him, his somewhat deep eye sockets even becoming more radiant. Give me longer quickly, let me see him. Lu Zhao couldn't help but extend his hand and then pointed towards Deng Zhi, his eyes fixed on the swaddle in front of him. There is his only second child inside, his youngest son Lu Long. He is also the chosen successor of the great Han dynasty by him and Deng Sui. Sometimes Lu Zhao really feels like he is being disliked by heaven, and this diligent effort is for the sake of the great man. But in the end, he didn't enjoy a good day and finally brought the great Han into a prosperous era, but what followed was the endless natural disasters. And my body also collapsed directly at this moment. The most important thing is that over the years, he has been working hard to provide offspring for the great Han, hoping to have a usable successor for him. However he gave birth to more than ten sons and several daughters in a row. But his four daughters lived well, but his dozen or so sons died one after another. He almost every once in a while witnessed the birth of his own flesh and blood, watching the small and lovely child, and seeing him appear in his arms like this. Then it disappeared from my sight and became an indescribable past in my memories. This time. Two times, three times, a dozen times Lu Xiao felt that he had become like this at this age, and there were more or less of these reasons. Because he had to immerse himself in the vast explica of national politics in order to prevent himself from feeling so desperate every time. Countless government affairs allowed him to temporarily forget the pain, but working all night eventually caused his body to completely collapse. At this moment, someone finally came up with a suggestion. Your Majesty's dragon aura is too strong, and this newly born dragon cannot withstand the rendering of this dragon aura. It's better to raise the children among the people and use the gentleness of the people to nourish the prince, which may help them survive Lu Zhao is not sure what this advice is for, but he knows it has indeed been successful. Whether it was Emperor Xiao Xian who grew up from the common people in the past, children who could not survive in the royal family sometimes could survive in the common people. What are the reasons behind this? Perhaps many people are aware of it, but they haven't talked too much about it. Lu Zhao sent his last two children to the people, Lu Sheng and Lu Long. Since birth, they have already left the palace, and apart from a few people, not many even know who their mother is. As for where they are, very few people know. As the elder brother of the Empress and the beloved general of Emperor Lu Zhao, Deng Zhi, the general of Huben Zhonglang, was one of them. At this moment, he invited Lu Long back, which also represented that the Han dynasty had reached the time of passing down the torch. Is this longer? Lu Zhao weakly hugged the sleeping child in his arms and looked at the pink sleeping face. Lu Zhao couldn't help but smile at the corner of his mouth. I haven't held longer since he was born. I really didn't expect that longer would have grown so big in a blink of an eye, pink and chubby. Does he look very similar to me? Lu Zhao looked at the child in his arms and also asked Deng Sui. At this moment, on the broad bed, the emperor, empress, and prince of the Han dynasty snuggled together. If seen by outsiders, it is truly a warm scene. Longer is the prince of your majesty, so naturally he is like his majesty. Not only in terms of appearance, but also in terms of personality. When he grows up, he will definitely be as wise and powerful as his majesty, and he can definitely lead this big man down. Go on better, when Deng Sui said these words, a few tears couldn't help flowing from the corner of her eyes. She had already tried hard to restrain herself, hoping to make herself happier in Lu Zhao's final moments. At least not to affect his final mood. But when she saw this scene, she couldn't control her emotions in the end. The tears from the corners of her eyes couldn't stop falling down, and in the end, a big hand slowly landed on the back of her hand. Empress, didn't you agree to live this period well? Your Majesty. This child is still too young, and the burden of this big man is too heavy. If it were just handed over to him like this, even if those courtiers were loyal enough. They may also have some different thoughts. Although you have not allowed me to bestow rewards on your family for these years, now if we want to make you stand firm. There are people around you who can be trusted. 
Kai Luan is a useful person, Zhao Bo Zhao Bo is a diligent and hardworking person who can be used. In the future, if you need to stabilize this big man, let Uncle Zhao help you more. My concubine, thank you very much, your majesty. I really need to thank the empress, Lu Zhao said as he once again grasped Deng Sui's hand. I can't hold on anymore. This Han dynasty will be handed over to you in the future. My Empress Dowager of the Han Dynasty End of this chapter Chapter 6 Empress Dowager Deng Sui of the Great Han Dynasty, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty Deng Sui, 2, in the twelfth month of the first year of Yuanqing, at the snowy Zhangde Hall, Lu Zhao, the Great Han Emperor, finally closed his eyes forever. Before his death, he decided to appoint his youngest son Lu Long as the emperor. However, considering Lu Long's young age, Empress Deng Sui was appointed as the regent to assist the emperor. At the same time, famous officials were selected to assist the new emperor in the court, and Deng Ji, the elder brother of Deng Sui, was appointed as the general of chariots and cavalry and the minister of rights, to control the court's politics and stabilize the situation. From then on, the Great Han Dynasty entered a brand new era, and Empress Dowager Deng Sui officially became the Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty. The first thing Deng Sui did after succeeding the Empress Dowager was to find Lu Zhao's second son, who remained in the people and was also the Crown Prince Lu Sheng, who had no official position as emperor. Because this person has been suffering from chronic illnesses since childhood and is weak and sickly, there is a reason why he is not recognized as legitimate. It's just that this chronic illness and being too young make it unclear whether these two are familiar or not, but the people in the court did not feel sad about this matter, Deng Sui. This actually made Deng Sui breathe a sigh of relief first. From the Empress to the Empress Dowager, facing this transformation of identity, Deng Sui was still somewhat unable to change for a while, and he was also busy with various affairs in the court. Even though she diligently assists the new emperor in handling government affairs every day, while stabilizing the situation in the court, she also endures her own grief to handle the funeral of the previous emperor. Finally, we also need to take care of the little emperor, hoping that he can live a better life and have a stronger physique. Don't die young like his brothers. Da Han, he can no longer withstand further turmoil. But even with such day and night of turmoil, Deng Sui still handled it very poorly. Even though he had already been exposed to many things with Lu Zhao's permission before, when she truly got started on her own. The complex government affairs, intricate relationships, and the network of connections in the court all left him at a loss, unsure of what to do for a moment. Even many jokes have appeared. Faced with the ridicule of everyone, both openly and secretly, even some courtiers in the court would speak sarcastically to her in front of her, as if they were convinced that she couldn't understand. The only thing Deng Sui could do in the face of such a situation was to put his smile on his face, and then work hard to calm his mood, not revealing his emotions and disappointment to anyone. But every time she returned to her own dormitory, she would let everyone out and then let herself take care of something in the dormitory, Sister Chin this period of time may be the only time she can relax. No one knows what Deng Sui is doing in the dormitory, and no one dares to approach the dormitory at this time. Even though the palace attendants gradually began to change their respectful thoughts towards the Empress Dowager, the Shangfang Ling, who had been following her closely and was almost inseparable, was the constant attendant Kai Luan. But it's a nightmare in the hearts of all the palace people no one wants to let themselves fall into Kai Luan's hands. If that's the case, then they also hope that when they fall into each other's hands, they are already a corpse and at this moment, the problems in the palace also erupted at the first moment. Empress Dowager, there's something I think the Empress Dowager should know. After walking out of his own dormitory again, the attendant Kai Luan quickly came to Deng Sui's side and spoke softly to her without any hesitation. From that tone, Deng Sui couldn't hear any emotional fluctuations in him. What's going on? Deng Sui looked at Kai Luan for a while, but couldn't see any change in his face. In the end, 
he could only speak slightly towards Kai Luen, it's okay, just put it bluntly. It's not a big deal either, it's just that there has been a great funeral in the palace recently, and the new emperor has succeeded to the throne. It's inevitable that there will be some chaos in the palace. Today, while inspecting the palace, I found a box of jewelry missing from the Qinliang Hall. Although I am not lacking in this thing, as a person in the palace, if my hands and feet are not clean, then this matter cannot be done after Kai Luan finished speaking, he immediately closed his mouth and didn't say anything about who did it or how to do it. And Deng Sui knew that these were things that Kai Luan wanted to ask her, or rather, these were choices that Kai Luan had made for her. Is it in the palace? Deng Sui couldn't help but take a deep breath at this moment. I know that now that I have ascended this throne, I hold great power but don't have enough prestige. There will definitely be people who have feelings for me. I just didn't expect that this first thing would happen by my side. The Qingliang Palace is the forbidden palace of the Southern Palace of the Han Dynasty, and it is impossible for outsiders to enter this place. Your Majesty has just ascended the throne at a young age and has not yet received a concubine. The concubine of the late emperor has been sent to the cemetery to guard the tomb, and these people are not in the palace either. Nowadays, there are few people in this palace, so naturally there are fewer ears and eyes. It's not a strange thing to have such a thing when Deng Sui said this, he couldn't help but look at Kai Luan beside him, as if wanting to know how Kai Luan answered. But unfortunately, Kai Luan didn't say anything, and even the expression on his face was so casual and indifferent, with no intention of speaking. This made Deng Sui feel a bit embarrassed. In the end, she could only cough lightly and then whispered to Kai Luan. I have long heard that Shang Fang Ling was a confidant of the late emperor. When the late emperor was still alive, he said that Shang Fang Ling had great talent. If it's the Shang Fang's order, how should we handle this matter, if it were a minister? Kai Luan didn't expect that the Empress Dowager would really easily throw this question to him, without any intention of making a decision. He was momentarily stunned. Then he looked at Deng Sui in front of him, and finally a smile appeared on his lips. If I were to handle this matter, it would actually be simple. How simple is it? Even if there are few people in this palace, there are still fixed personnel to do fixed tasks, and there are not too many people who can come into contact with the Qingliang Palace. So there won't be too many people who can succeed. Take down all the palace attendants related to the Qingliang Palace and torture them one by one, without worrying about them not telling the truth. Who did such a thing at such a time, then naturally we can know. When Kai Luan uttered these words, his face was light and casual, as if he had made the torture of these over a hundred people as simple as eating his own meals. However, Deng Sui couldn't help but feel a chill in his back, and at the moment Kai Luan finished speaking, he immediately spoke up to refute. This matter is unacceptable. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Empress Dowager Deng Sui of the Great Han Dynasty, 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty Deng Sui, 3, Shengfang's Order, Please Do Not Misunderstand What I just meant was, the Empress Dowager doesn't need to say much. She is the Empress Dowager of the Great Han, who was supposed to make decisions for him. Previously, I only said a few words, which could not be considered any advice. How to handle the affairs in the palace ultimately depends on the Empress Dowager's orders at this moment, Kai Luan seemed to understand Deng Sui's nervousness and unease, and did not show any inappropriate or fishmeal atmosphere. On the contrary, with a light smile on his face, he once again clarified the distinction between master and servant, and determined who was in charge of this big man in this world Kai Luan's attitude made Deng Sui feel a long dot awaited relief and he believed that Kai Luan was not someone who would use any tricks on her. Of course, Deng Sui did not know Kai Luan, but she knew her husband. That was a person who led the Han dynasty to its peak, someone who could stir up trouble in the court from a young age. If Kai Luan does not have absolute loyalty, he will definitely not let Kai Luan become his personal guard around him. Since that's the case, 
than this matter. The Empress Dowager is the Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty. I cannot manage external affairs, but if it were within this palace, I guarantee that no one can stop the Empress Dowager's footsteps. After Kai Luan finished speaking, he directly looked around at the attendants and guards around him, and at this moment, his eyes became once again fierce and sharp. That sharp gaze was like a knife that could easily pierce everyone's heart in disguise, making them silently lower their heads. It seems that the palace is not so peaceful either. Although Deng Sui still had some shortcomings in handling court affairs and many other matters, there is no doubt that she is a wise and intelligent woman. She could tell from the appearances of the attendants and even the imperial guards around her that they probably all had their own secrets, he 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 he. Faced with Deng Sui's size, Kai Luan just chuckled lightly and then spoke softly to Deng Sui, it's not a secret, nor is it anything unsafe. Since the rise of Emperor Guangwu, the power of some people has been enduring. After a while, their hands naturally extended a little further. Not only the high dot ranking officials and generals in this court, but also the close courtiers responsible for conveying the will, such as the imperial attendant, Zhongchang attendant, provincial Shangshu, and Huangmen attendant, are also their people. The late emperor has been manipulating his hands and feet from here for so many years. Besides, the news from his majesty outside this court is also of utmost importance. They cannot enter this palace but refuse to give up. Except for some women in the Su family who became concubines, these people hum. When Kai Luan said this, he couldn't help but sneer all over. He didn't originally come from a good background. Don't talk about the offspring of an official, he can't even be considered a basic aristocrat, and even this eunuch's identity. He should be the first one in Jiangnan. Therefore, he himself couldn't stand the many styles of those aristocratic families. For many years in this palace, he even became a close retainer of the late emperor, and now he is also a confidant of the empress dowager. He has no good looks towards those people. Now it's just a sneer, without saying anything more outrageous directly, that's already quite good. If it were just back then, Kai Luan sighed in his heart, saying that heroes don't mention their courage back then. Now, he is already someone around the empress dowager, and everything must be based on her watching Kai Luan bow down again, with a respectful attitude and no more words to say, Deng Sui had some thoughts in his heart. But at the same time, I also understood that Kai Luan didn't say much. Some things are not as simple as they seem, such as the late emperor trying to stabilize himself. He transformed his elder brother from a 2000 stone tiger Benzhong general to a general of chariots and cavalry, and was appointed as a member of the three departments to help stabilize the court situation. But what's the use of this? Many courtiers cannot have any opinions on the imperial edict of the late emperor, nor will they openly oppose this matter, which has become a foregone conclusion. But that doesn't mean they will remain indifferent to it. Getting an official position and corresponding rights are completely different things. Nowadays, even though they have obtained official positions and the status given to them by the late emperor, if they want to truly continue to steer for the Han dynasty, huh, after a deep breath, Deng Sui adjusted his mood again and took big strides towards a certain direction. Let's go, we can't keep dragging on the matter of the Qingliang palace. Since the matter has already arisen, then take advantage of this time to resolve it. After Deng Sui finished speaking these words, Kai Luan immediately took a big step and followed Deng Sui's side, followed closely by many attendants and the imperial guards. In the cool hall, Deng Sui stopped the idea of moving a large number of torture tools and also stopped everyone who wanted to make a big fuss. She just calmly let all the people related to this cool palace appear in front of her. Then, looking at the dozens of familiar or unfamiliar faces, I slowly walked up to them and looked at them one by one. See the Empress Dowager, slave. Don't speak. Deng Sui sneered directly and then made the other person close their mouth. You don't have to pretend to be foolish in front of this palace. Why did it appear here? You can even say that you understand it better than this palace. Today, our palace doesn't need you to explain anything or say anything more our palace will give you an explanation. 
After Deng Sui finished speaking, he walked directly to the first eunuch's side, his eyes fixed on the eunuch in front of him. At this moment, although Deng Sui's gaze still showed kindness, it was equally sharp. The sharp gaze seemed to penetrate all the thoughts of the person in front of him, causing the eunuch's attendant to tremble uncontrollably. The Empress Dowager Hmm. Deng Sui looked at the maid who seemed to want to say something, but his eyebrows slightly raised. Then a cold snort interrupted all the words he wanted to say, causing him to lower his head and his lips to wriggle slightly, as if he wanted to say something. But I dare not say much. After seeing his appearance, Deng Sui knew that there was something in his heart, but she did not immediately take it down. But he moved directly to the next person. The same sharp gaze, the same silent attitude, the same lowered head. One, two, three, five, ten more and more people showed their reactions in front of Deng Sui. During this process, Deng Sui gradually had an answer in his heart. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Wise Eyes Like Torches You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Wise Eyes Like Torches You Still Have You and you. Stay. Deng Sui didn't say much, he just reached out his white and tender finger and pointed at a few people among the group. Then quietly let them stay, as for the others, no orders appeared. After seeing this scene, Kai Luan on the side immediately understood. With a wave of his hand, several imperial guards rushed out and pressed the three guys pointed at by Deng Sui to the ground. Despite their frightened cries, they were immediately brought under control. And this scene also startled everyone else, but before they could react, Kai Luan had already walked up to them. What are you doing in such panic? Since the Empress Dowager has said that you are fine, then you should continue to perform your respective duties. So flustered, are you also like them, the treacherous and sycophantic people in this palace? When everyone saw that Kai Luan had directly convicted those three people without questioning at this moment, they couldn't help but be greatly surprised. But they are all attendants and forbidden soldiers in this palace, although in the hearts of those poor people, they are important figures serving His Majesty. In the eyes of their parents and family, they are proud to stand out. But only they themselves know that in this seemingly cannibalistic palace, they are the most inconspicuous group of people. Sometimes even a person cannot be counted. At this moment, since the Empress Dowager and the Shangfang Ling have already convicted them, even if they have some dissatisfaction and fear in their hearts, they dare not say anything more. Under the gaze of Kai Luan, the group quickly bowed respectfully to Deng Sui and then prepared to leave silently. But at this moment, Deng Sui suddenly spoke up. Wait a moment. Deng Sui immediately stopped everyone's movements, and then looked at Kai Luan in front of him in the puzzled eyes of everyone. He didn't care about the crowd here and asked Kai Luan directly. Why did the Shangfang Ling just directly say that these three people are the cunning sycophants who stole the Qingliang palace? Do Shangfang Ling know anything, Chen, I don't know anything. Since he doesn't know anything, why is it like this? Deng Sui seemed to really want to know about this matter and spoke to the other party again. This announcement didn't seem to say much just now. The meaning of the Empress Dowager, the villain has already understood. What Deng Sui didn't expect was that Kai Luan was so grand, and he didn't hesitate to speak out about his speculation about himself. But Deng Sui still doesn't understand. Although you understand what this palace means, you never thought that this palace was wrong. When Deng Sui said these words, he couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva, as if worried that his words would have some negative consequences. Your Shangfang Ling should have seen it just now. Although our palace has left these three people behind, we have not interrogated them in any way. And what I just said is very clear. I just clicked on these three people, and I don't even know what their names are. If this palace is wrong, Shangfang Ling, the Empress Dowager, is not wrong. Kai Luan did not let Deng Sui finish speaking. He directly interrupted all of Deng Sui's words with an exceptionally firm attitude. You are the Empress Dowager of the Great Han, and I, the Empress Dowager of the Great Han, 
will never be wrong. The voice was not loud, but it fell into everyone's ears, and the tone was not particularly special, but it was firm and made people shudder. After Kai Luan finished speaking these words, the three people who were held down immediately stopped all their resistance in that moment. Just now Kai Luan's meaning has been expressed very clearly, they are destined to become sinners today. Whether they are real criminals or fake. The result is always more important than the truth. Deng Sui also looked at Kai Luan with a calm expression at this moment, as if he had just been saying what he would eat tonight as usual. She did not agree with the other person's words. Of course, there is no objection. Deng Sui slowly walked up to the three already disheartened attendants, then calmly looked at them and spoke slowly. I know that you don't want to admit it, and I also know that you feel that I don't have any evidence, so I want to kill you and not admit that this matter is related to you. But it's okay, I will keep everyone here today just to tell them and also to tell you this palace does not know anything and there is no evidence to prove that you are sinners. But this palace knows that the three of you are closely related to this matter. There was once a person who told my palace that her heart was the most mysterious, but her eyes were the most sincere. Previously, this palace and all of you had exchanged glances, while others were either embarrassed, fearful, or indifferent. Only the three of you are avoiding. You are not afraid of the status of this palace and dare not look at it. You are feeling guilty. Your eyes, your nervousness to the point of constantly clenching your fists, and the cold sweat on your forehead all prove that you are feeling guilty. What makes you feel guilty in front of this palace? This palace is not a ferocious person, and its prestige has not reached this level. Since that's the case, why are you so afraid? I think it's because there are some things in your heart that I'm afraid my palace will know, that's why you're so guilty. I don't know. Is what I said right, I'm waiting. I don't know what the Empress Dowager is saying. One of the three people didn't seem to want to give up just like this, still insisting on speaking of their innocence. We were only a little shocked to see the Empress Dowager for the first time. The Empress Dowager is the Empress Dowager of the Han Dynasty, and it is not something that these lowly people like us can profane. So I dare not look at the Empress Dowager. If this makes the Empress Dowager misunderstand, please forgive me. Forgive me. After the person finished speaking, he immediately kept kowtowing and kowtowing to the other person, as if he had suffered extreme injustice. And the other person next to him, upon seeing this scene, also reacted and immediately kowtowed along with that person. That look really vented all my grievances. However, in the face of this situation, Deng Sui was not worried, nor did he feel any panic due to their actions. She just looked at the last person on the other side very calmly and then said a soft sentence. You should be a smart person, why don't you share your grievances with them? At this time, is it still important to be unjust? What's the point of doing such a thing at this time? End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Clever Tongue You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Clever Tongue, Do You Really Think It's Meaningless? Deng Sui looked at the attendant in front of him, without any change in his face due to his attitude. Perhaps so. Now, whether you say it or not, it doesn't change much for you. But if you have said so, if you can return that box of jewelry, maybe. What? If we retrieve the jewelry, will the Empress Dowager bypass our lives? The eunuch seemed to have truly opened up everything. Faced with Deng Sui's words, he had no intention of regretting them at all and for his attitude, Deng Sui seemed to have already gained some understanding. Sure enough, Deng Sui sneered directly and whispered to the person, it seems that you have prepared everything. Even if caught, I won't regret it. But why are you doing this? You are just eunuchs and attendants in this palace, and it doesn't seem like you are descendants of any family. It should just be from a poor background. No one would let you use such a lowly and shameless method to deal with this palace at such a time. I think you've encountered something, right? Do you need money? Deng Sui's voice was gentle, while the attitude of the three remained incredibly silent. However, 
the two guys who repeatedly cowed out and shouted that they were wrong finally stopped saying anything wrong. But they still refused to admit their guilt, as if their attitude is to resist Deng Sui to the end. And their attitude, as well as those words just now, has made Kai Luan understand that these three people are the ones who did such things. At this moment, he was ready to step forward and directly serve these three people with severe punishment. He believed that even if these few people were stubborn, they would not be able to resist. In the face of his severe punishment, one must also obediently speak up in the end. There are many people in this world who are not afraid of death, but those who are not afraid of death do not mean they are not afraid of pain. Kai Luan, whose eyes gradually became fierce, was about to lift his legs when he saw a pair of tender eyes staring at him. Her eyes were soft and watery, calm without any fear or panic, and even without any negative emotions. These eyes were so clean that they shouldn't even appear in this seemingly magnificent but actually filled with filth in the palace and it was such a pair of clean eyes, such a calm gaze, that finally calmed all his impulses and restlessness, and once again calmed his mood. Yeah. You lack money, you need money, that's why you take risks. Deng Suena's gentle voice reappeared in everyone's ears, but this time after she finished speaking, the conversation suddenly changed but have you forgotten that you took away a box of sealed jewelry, not a box of immediately usable copper coins. No matter why you urgently need this money, you always have to sell these jewelry into money. But have you figured out how to sell it? Even if this box of jewelry is priceless, if you can't sell it, it's probably a pile of waste. It doesn't have any effect on you or your family. In the end, I can only look at that box of useless jewelry and sigh with disappointment. Deng Sui's words were still gentle, but the words she said directly pierced everyone's hearts. At this moment, those three guys who were still persevering were already starting to blush. Perhaps it was guilt, or perhaps it was Deng Sui's words that truly touched their hearts, causing a different change in their expressions. At this moment, Kai Luan's gaze towards Deng Sui couldn't help but give off a slightly different look. At the same time, there is also some emotion in my heart. It seems that this Empress Dowager is not as simple as she appears. Sure enough, the changes in the expressions of those three people made Kai Luan see them, and at the same time, they also made Deng Sui see a real and vivid picture. She understood that the minds of this group of people had become confused. However, Deng Sui did not take advantage of the heat to continue doing anything to them at this moment, but directly spoke to Kai Luan with a hint of smile. Shang Fang Ling, can we withdraw some money from the expenses in our palace? The Empress Dowager is the Empress Dowager of the Great Han Dynasty, and this is the matter of taking. Even the Empress Dowager in this palace should lead by example, using more and less with legal support, and not acting recklessly. This month, the expenses of our palace will be halved. Just take that half of the expenses Deng Sui's words caused Kai Luan to remain silent for a moment again, and then he looked at the other person for a long time before slowly bowing to Deng Sui. Then take a big step and turn around to leave. Soon, Kai Luan returned again, this time with a box full of five bot coins. Empress Dowager, this is, is this half of the expenses of this month in this palace. Deng Sui seemed surprised by the money and silk in this box, his face unconsciously becoming a bit ugly. The cost of this palace is too high. Starting from today, the cost of this palace will be halved. Even this month, the remaining expenses have been halved once again, and unnecessary items no longer need to be sent to our palace for sleeping Deng Sui's words made Kai Luan's mouth twitch uncontrollably. He could imagine how many people would be wailing and lamenting in the palace in the coming days. Although Deng Sui said that his expenses had been halved, as the most powerful empress dowager of the Han dynasty, her expenses had been halved. If the people below are still as they are, then he is not far from death. After Deng Sui gave the order, he no longer hesitated and chattered, but walked up to the three people again and whispered softly. These money and silk are given to you by our palace. Or rather, it was given to your family by this palace. This palace knows that something must have happened in your family, 
which is why you took such a risk. Since you have done it, our palace will definitely punish you. But after all, you are members of this palace, and your families are also members of this palace. This palace cannot watch your families suffer and remain indifferent. These money and silk may change the current situation of your family. Of course, nothing can change, but it's always better than doing nothing. How to choose is up to you. After Deng Sui finished speaking, he had the box of money and silk delivered to the three of them. Compared to a box of jewelry, this box of five bought money was certainly a drop in the bucket. But the words Deng Sui said before were directly imprinted in their hearts. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Close Friends in the Boudoir. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Close Friends in the Boudoir. The Empress Dowager said it, but is it true? Just as everyone fell into silence and shock, one of those three people couldn't resist speaking up first. Looking at his eager gaze and listening to his slightly excited tone, even the ordinary eunuch attendants beside him now understood. This matter has not wronged them. And the other two couldn't help but change their faces suddenly after hearing this person's words, but at the moment they were about to speak, they coincidentally changed their own faces. In the end, he didn't say anything, just lowered his head in silence. I don't agree, but it seems that there is no opposition either but Deng Sui looked at the excited and eager attendant, who even had a hint of worry and panic, and she didn't promise anything to the other party. Just a very indifferent nod in another direction, it was those who were supposed to leave but were stopped by Deng Sui. Deng Sui didn't speak, but everyone had already understood her meaning. With these people present, if Deng Sui contradicts or does something bad later on, her reputation is destined to become a joke. Similarly, as long as she really does what she just promised, these people will also become her best promoters, and her reputation will soon have a better change. A box of five bot coins, which were crucial life. Saving money for the three eunuchs with unclean hands and feet. But for Deng Sui, this is just half a month's expenses, and it may even be just a part of it. It's such a fitting thing to exchange these things for one's reputation. Deng Sui's thoughts were not hidden at all. It could even be said that they were meant to be revealed on purpose which immediately reassured these people. Meanwhile, the thing is now outside the cool palace. The eunuch who had just started speaking had already directly confirmed this charge. He looked at Deng Sui and almost didn't take a breath before speaking out everything he knew. Please forgive me, Empress Dowager. We are aware of our deep sins. But there is nothing we can do. We are actually from the same hometown and have all been affected by natural disasters. A while ago, when the late emperor passed away, everyone in the court was rushing around for the late emperor's affairs, forgetting that our people also need to live. Our hometown has been at the Hadong Ferry for a generation. During this period, the Yellow River suddenly began to surge, flooding our farmland and causing a plague in our hometown. My family had no choice but to send us a letter, hoping that we could find a way to get some rice, grains, and medicinal herbs for our family to make a living. Although we are in the palace, our monthly salary, rice, and grain are only that. There is no surplus rice or grain left for them but after all, those are our parents and brothers. If we really don't pay attention to them, I'm afraid we will do the same in the future I really have no choice but to take a risk and do this. We know that many concubines in this harem are now going to the cemetery to guard their tombs, and the new emperor is too young, so there are no concubines in the palace now. This has led to a shortage of personnel in the palace, with many areas experiencing shortages. And inside the Qingliang Hall is the place where Feng Guiren used to live. Feng Guiren left in a hurry, and many things were not packed in time. There were also some jewelry sealed in the main hall. Two of the three of us are guards, and the villain is responsible for sweeping this cool hall. So the three of us summed it up directly. Since there was no other way, it was better to fight hard, so maybe there was still a way for our family to survive. That's why I did such a wrong thing. After the person finished speaking, he immediately kowtowed and cried at Deng Sui again. However, this time he didn't shout that he was wronged, 
but directly told everyone that he really couldn't hold on anymore. Looking at the tearful attendant, Deng Sui didn't say much. She just glanced calmly at Kai Luan. Then I saw Kai Luan nodding slowly. Quickly, a box of jewelry with a slight smell was carried in from outside, and everyone present was related to this cool palace. They naturally know what happened, and they also know what the lost thing is. When they saw the box of jewelry really appearing in front of them, everyone's doubts completely disappeared, and their eyes towards Deng Sui changed from before. The Empress Dowager used such a thing to make them have a completely different view of herself and what Deng Sui wanted to do was not over yet. She did not forgive these three people. No matter what reason they had, stealing things from the palace was a great disrespectful crime. They will undoubtedly die today, this is the law that Deng Sui wants to establish. But before executing them, Deng Sui also gave them a chance. You can personally choose one or a few people to bring this box of wealth back to your hometown, and there will be no obstruction in this palace. Of course, since you say that Hadong County has suffered a disaster, our palace has not received any news yet, and this matter is not bad either. Shan Fang Ling, I am here. After hearing Deng Sui's words, Kai Luan immediately stood up and bowed to Deng Sui, please give orders, Empress Dowager. Although it is said that the duty of the Shangfang Ling is to be in charge of manufacturing weapons and palace utensils. But now our palace cannot trust anyone else. You can choose some reliable people from the palace to personally go to Hadong County, and then bring along the people from the Imperial Medical Office. Tell this palace in detail about the situation in the east of the river. If this Hadong County is really as they said, then this palace allows you to find local officials and take the lead in resolving this matter. My lord, take orders. Kai Luan bowed directly to Deng Sui, then immediately turned around and left. Soon, a brief commotion began in the palace. Then it quickly subsided on the other hand, after seeing that Deng Sui did not rebel, the three of them also bowed to Deng Sui and were taken away with peace of mind, taking their lives. Finally, Deng Sui issued several orders again. This includes sending many former concubines sleeping halls, including the Qingliang Hall, as well as jewelry and jewelry that many concubines who guarded the mausoleum had not had time to take with them. Especially the highly esteemed concubines such as Zhou Guiren and Feng Guiren were highly rewarded. It is completely different from the frugality she has always pursued. After these things were done, Deng Sui had not yet had a chance to rest or see His Majesty, who was still very young. I heard a sound of footsteps coming from a distance, along with a familiar voice. The Empress Dowager is indeed the Empress Dowager, and this method has become increasingly sophisticated. End of this chapter